Triple G was given rounds. He took some rounds late in the fight. And I'm going to tell you, there's a couple of things going on here that could be excuses. Because as a doctor, I took an oath to care not only about the physical being of a patient, but the spiritual being of a patient. The, the you know, that part of a patient. Not just, not just the body, but the soul. And so I'm going to speak to that part where I understand a lot of people, they are confused with Canelo and how this could happen. I'm going to give you an excuse. I'm going to put a few positive. The first thing is he's not a great fighter, okay? That's just, um, but here's another one. Maybe going up and down in weight as he has to light heavyweight then back down, maybe that has impacted him physically. It impacted, I believe, it impacted a great fighter named Roy Jones years ago when he went up to heavyweight, back down with John to beat John Ruiz and then back down. I believe that it did have a detrimental effect on Roy Jones. So maybe that's playing a little bit, a little bit out uh, in it. Also, he looked like he was gassing after eight rounds, which was kind of amazing, uh, Canelo. Now, maybe it's because he really wanted to get rid of him early. He didn't, and then he started mentally and physically gassing a little bit. Um, that I mean, he started accepting clinches, even initiating clinches. You don't do that if you say you're going to knock a guy out. Canelo said it. Teddy Atlas didn't say it. Canelo said, I'm going to knock him out. I have no regard for this guy, no respect anymore, you know, as far as belonging in the ring with me. I'm going to knock him out. Listen, when you have the advantage on the inside, which he's supposed to have as the younger guy, the stronger guy now, in this particular time at, at, with a 40-year-old uh, Golovkin, you're not supposed to clinch. You're supposed to fight in there. You're supposed to punch in there and take advantage of that. And you're supposed to behave like the younger guy, keep the pressure on. Even his own corner validated what I'm saying right now. His own corner said, hey, it's time to be the younger guy. They actually said that. It's time to be to use your youth with this old man and be the younger guy. And he didn't. And again, if you want to knock a guy out, like he said he wanted to knock out uh, Golovkin and he would knock him out, you punch on the inside. You don't initiate clinches. But he did. There was a little break in, a little weakening, physically, mentally there on his part. Again, great fighters don't do that. That's all I'm saying. Good, solid fighters can do it sometimes, and he's a good, solid fighter, but not great ones. And he did. And he... He allowed, he allowed Golovkin to, as I said earlier, to, to keep a slow enough pace where later on he could make a little run. He could grab some rounds. And there was, there was something else going on that, again, not an excuse, but an explanation maybe to the performance where I saw... Canelo, not Canelo, Triple G in the later rounds, maybe around the ninth or so. I'm not sure what round. But in the later rounds, he touched gloves with Canelo. Now, people say, hey, Teddy, why, why are you bringing that? What's the big deal? First of all, it is a big deal. They didn't touch gloves. You touch gloves at the beginning, at the end. But they didn't touch gloves in the first two. They were at war. S serious stuff. They didn't touch gloves. There was, there was no treaties made. When he touched gloves, he being uh, Triple G, Canelo touched back right there, right there. there that, see, most people are never going to touch on this, ever. But there was a little something going on there. There was a little silent agreement going on there, guys. A little where it, it's, it's like, okay, you know what? We, we did what we had to do here tonight. You know, uh, I, you're going to win the fight, basically, you being Canelo, and, you know, but I'm still here. People didn't think I'd still be here. And you know what? Uh, I'm not saying let's take it easy, but it, it's kind of been settled already. It's kind of understood already. And now let's just bring it home. But it was it was a different dynamic now. It wasn't like, I said a great fighter like a Robinson or Sugar Ray Leonard, they would have went after it. 
Julio Cesar Chavez, I'm going to get this guy. I'm going to get rid of him. Why? Because that's what I do. Because I see, I, I'm a shark. I smell blood. I'm going to go and freaking, I'm going to eat. And, and there's blood in the water. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go and I'm going to devour what's in the water. And there was blood in the water. And, and now suddenly, again, there was like a treaty. There was like an uh, understanding where, hey, we proved it. You, you're still here, you know, you old great fighter. And I'm going to win this. And yeah, um, you know what? That's just bring it home. We're bringing home. You walk out of here with your pride intact, like I said earlier. I go on to many, many, many more millions of dollars. I go on to, you know, future fights, probably the winner of uh, Bevo and, and um, Ramirez, you know, uh, for millions of dollars. And you know what? There will be no passes it's kind of like a hall pass, that movie, The Hall Pass. There will be no hall pass given in those fights. But there was a hall pass given. There, yeah, yeah, there was a hall pass given. But not, but not in the fights in, in, in Canelo's future. And he kind of knew that. And I'm telling you, that was a little bit of an element of it. Just a little bit. It was a little bit of a factor, an element, uh, X factor, Whatever you want to call it. Um, and so, again, I, I understand where people have a hard time swallowing the truth, hearing this. But, I, you know, the one, the one thing is, if you guys want to believe it, go ahead. But don't try to get me to believe it just because you're a fanatical fan. Because kind of like the movie, you know, I love to use movie, you know, uh, clips and, and go back to movies that make sense for, you know, to put something out there. And it's kind of like the Godfather movie where Michael Corleone says to to that guy who I couldn't stand, um, the what was his name? Fredo. Um, no, uh, Carlo. That that oh, Carlo. That, 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 <laughs> that, that Traded that I, gutless. Uh, I love piece the way you talk about them that, like they're real people. <laughs> that gutless piece of garbage. That that uh, that rat. That that guy with no character. Anyway, and um, and he goes, and he says to him, "Listen, just I know it was you that set up Santino, but don't lie to me. Don't lie to me anymore because it insults my intelligence." And it makes me angry. Well, it insults my intelligence when people try to get me to swallow some of the things that they have swallowed, that they believe, that, that you know, good, you want to believe it, fine. But don't insult my intelligence with it because I've been there. I've been there 50 years in this business. I understand these things happen. I understand the landscape. You know, like Bob Dylan said in his song, you know, I know which way the wind's blowing. I, I, I'm sorry. It bothers some people, but I, I already do. 